question 13 comparing solubility of hydroxides and sulfates of group 2 now I find it that it's easier if you will just base it on memory which one is more soluble and which one is less soluble so how can we remember maybe there's that's a way we can do that magnesium and barium these are the two that they're comparing now solubility of hydroxides solubility of sulfates what we need to know is actually the trends are actually opposite of each other right so if you remember one of them the other one we just turn it around so for me I find that it's easier to remember the idea that barium sulfate from our qualitative analysis barium sulfate is an insoluble substance so in other words the solubility of sulfates it starts off as being soluble or more soluble and then as we go down when we reach barium sulfate it becomes insoluble so the solubility of the sulfates actually decreases down the group for group 2 if we remember this the trend we will just need to know that the solubility of the hydroxides is the opposite compared to sulfate so the solubility for self for the hydroxides increases magnesium hydroxide is more soluble than oh sorry magnesium hydroxide is less soluble than barium hydroxide magnesium sulfate is more soluble than barium sulfate question 14 sodium bromide and iodine solution this is the reaction for group 7 halogens so the easiest way to look at it is basically the idea that a more reactive halogen the halogen that is located further up the more reactive halogen will be able to displace a less reactive halide ion so we have iodine trying to displace bromine right? iodine is below bromine the element bromine so this reaction we do not expect a displacement to occur in other words we do not expect iodine to become iodide and bromine to be bromide to become bromine no, that doesn't happen Fifteen, we have astatine and concentrated sulfuric acid that's added to sodium astatite and then we'll get astatine, hydrogen astatite, hydrogen sulfide, sodium sulfate and all that which product is formed by the oxidation of one of the constituents of sodium astatite so what this we are saying is that there's it starts off as sodium astatite and then they ask which of them have undergone oxidation to form any of these products now let's figure out the oxidation states first for them sodium is group 1 we have plus 1 acetate will be minus 1 the total will be 0 and then we compare to all these the four options we have here right forming acetate diatomic since it's an element, its oxidation state is zero. So actually, this is the answer. Acetate starts off as minus one; it becomes acetine, which is zero. They are asking which one is actually could have undergone oxidation, or which product could have been formed due to the oxidation. At minus is oxidized to At two. Question 16 is the decomposition of group 2 nitrate. Okay. When group 2 decomposes, they give off nitrogen 
dioxide and oxygen and the group 2 oxides so we have this magnesium nitrate when it decomposes we get magnesium oxide we have two gases nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas All right so we balance it out two two four this is the ratio as which they are reacted and formed so 7.4 grams of magnesium nitrate is heated 7.4 grams what is the mass of x produced x is your nitrogen oxide so we are interested to find out this one Right. So what we need to do is find out the moles of 7.4 grams of magnesium nitrate. Multiply that by 2 to find out the moles of nitrogen dioxide. And then we multiply by mR to find the mass. So moles of magnesium nitrate. Okay, we start off with this information. 7.4 grams divided by the mR. 24 for magnesium 124 for nitrates you can use your periodic table All right, you can solve it or you can leave it for the next step this is the most of magnesium nitrate 2 moles of magnesium nitrate will give 4 moles of nitrogen dioxide so the moles of nitrogen dioxide we will take this number multiply by 2 and then finally we want the mass we will take this number the moles of nitrogen oxide multiply by its MR nitrogen 14 oxygen 16 each so and then if we work it out we will have 4.6 grams so form the equation first figure out the number of moles that we are starting with figure out the number of moles of nitrogen oxide and then multiply by its MR. Seventeen. Seventeen. We have the halogens or the halides reacting with silver. All right. Once the halides react with silver, we will get precipitates: silver chlorides, silver bromide silver iodide and silver acetate right so the precipitates will form um, difference in color slight variation and then of all these precipitates the one that will dissolve in dilute equals ammonia is actually silver chloride right? the rest of them don't really dissolve well in dilute equals ammonia so we have a precipitate and then they say after adding excess dilute equals ammonia we get a colorless solution it means that the precipitate actually dissolves that only means that the precipitate was silver chloride in other words originally Y will contain the chloride in this case sodium chloride 